with this sort of setup as uh, here we go ladies and gentlemen getting into the action of game one between liquid and mug golems and as we can see starting off there some of the lanes we've got coming out up top mickey playing the carry troll it's going to be supported by insania on the five pango he's got the orb of venom picked up he's ready to punch okay. tiger on his shadow demon mid lane quake for Ziboka. of course boxy left on the void spirit down at the bottom lane over on the other side on mug golem skeeter on the carry spectre boronir on the storm that we've seen from uh, them come out quite a few times now at this tournament. 33 playing the offlane Doom. Fada saving lives as the Oracle and try. Milan's going to be looking for the plays as this Ooh. Rubik is going to get met by Liquid here on the high ground. But he's got he boots. Should, yeah, he should be able to make it away. No problem at all with that movement speed. Sees the three tops, so he's probably expecting them to do, at least keep a try lane for maybe the first level or two if they can try to get a first blood. I think that's probably Liquid's better idea here if they have a support pango because i'm a little worried if it is just a support pango straight up and they just make these these standard dual lanes i think this top lane might suffer a bit here rubik and doom can pack a pretty decent punch especially when you don't have a real support to kind of help you out on the side and i'm looking at this storm last pick i, I just i look at mud golem's draft and like you said very standard kind of draft for them where they have so many different ways to start the fight you know this haunt gets popped they can pick and choose who they go for these battles so you're very standard Storm Spectre lineup with a nice Doom coming into play too. Their team fight might be a bit lackluster when that haunt isn't up. But they do have nice, you know, good supports to be able to move around. And the Rubik in particular with the Storm, they can constantly set up for kills. Yeah, I mean, without a doubt, it's definitely a much more tried and tested lineup yeah. uh, that Mug Golems have come out with here. Some very solid, solid core heroes that uh, have proven to be very strong right now in this meta. And yeah, like I want to see how they... Something a little different. I'm going to be looking a lot at Taiga and Botany, because these two, have, for me, have been just so crucial to uh, Liquid's games. If, if, I, if I feel like Ta Boxy's having a bad game, I feel like Liquid struggles so much. They always just... It feels like they never can really make stuff happen on the map. So these two, definitely the ones to be, at least for me, to keep eyes on. Yeah, and I mean... How much pressure do you think they are going to be able to put onto these two? I mean, so we're seeing Skeeter. He's going to have that help of Fada removing the stacks of the poison. Uh, is that sort of enough to, to mean that Skeeter's not going to be too interrupted by these two down here? Or, or what, what do you expect from Liquid to come out of the early early few waves and levels? They can they can probably punish Fada on the sideline. Oh, free courier for Fada. Okay. They can probably punish Fada on the sidelines there. But I think on Skeeter, once he gets like these points in dispersion, you negate too much of the damage and... You're always just going to have this lane pushing in. They also have their pull available immediately. So, like, Fada, it's, it, at some point, he can just walk over and start pulling. So, I think this lane should be just fine for the side of Mud Golems. Well, looking at the over the other lanes, mid lane, very even so far in the first few waves. Quirk from Boronir, keeping it close. And up top, we well, have seen the two supports keep each other busy. Milan and Insania just poking each other away from their respective cores. And in turn, that's just giving the space for. For 33 and Mickey to trade farm. Nobody really feeling under too much pressure up here for now. And Senior's actually doing a very good job of just bullying Milan a lot here. Even though Milan, he has a level 2. He's just done a great job of just resetting the lane positioning. And Mickey is able to get free farm. Can they stop the pull though, is the question. If Milan is, does get this pull, this is going to prove to be a pretty big concern up top for XP at least. And yeah, the pull is done. So that's one of the concerning things about having a melee five position some of the times is just breaking that pull is very difficult. Yeah, so Mickey's gonna have to contest. Yeah. Trying to mess around with them a little bit. Mickey steps over. As another courier, courier of Liquids falls. Milan sniping out Insania's behind him. Insania trying to run him down, but just obviously at these early levels, not really too much he can do other than a quick swashbuckle. And they can't threaten the Doom at all up here either, so it's going to be a free farm for 33 with level 2 on that Devour. He's going to go look for a nice creep to grab. And he's got a pretty damn good one for aggression. Probably the best one, actually. That 50 mana for huge damage on the Doom. If they look to get aggressive up top at all, now they can, for sure. They're going to try and go for Milan here with the slow. Milan, he's going to put the stick charges. Mickey, can he quite get the last hit? And he can't. 33 is able to step forward. Drop the clap and push Liquid back. Make sure the Liquid's not going to be able to find First Blood yet. 
They're doing, doing better than, top, than I thought they would up top. But it is versus a Doom, and Doom, you know, a bit, a bit passive, of course, for these first few levels. He's starting to get his strength since he got a good creep eaten. And they're chasing now, Insania. Can he got to Brock? find he some in here with the swashbuckle across the turret, and they turn with the burst, but it's not enough to kill Insania. It's Insania and Mickey get the first bud onto 33. Insania already starting to serve up. Milan's got to be a little careful how he hangs around. Swashbuckle's going to be back up in eight. And indeed, Milan already stepping away, but... Uh, I mean, it's working. And uh, Zadius Paco got the kill and, and didn't die. They, they couldn't quite burst him. And he's, I mean, he's actually setting up for all the farm for Mika. So, all right, five position Pango is going to work in this one versus this bit of a passive lane that they do have on Mud Golems. So it ends up working out for them here. And we see Mad if Mika gets pushed out as Milan top. I'm going to get the, the slows on to him. Chances there for them to turn with the telekinesis. And now 33 we will run down the two of them a little bit with the Scorched Earth. Huh. That was a kill on Insania. I'm not sure why he threw him away. If Insania gets the clap on it, or if uh, 33 gets the clap on Insania, Insania is dead. He just used Swashbuckle. That was weird by Milan. He wanted to get yeah. the drop stun onto Mike, but yeah, ends up missing a kill, I feel, out of it. We're coming to the five minute runes, but Insania. Is he going to be able to come in and contest? This doesn't look like it up top. 33 is actually 30, able to cut down he... Mikke's courier, which was about to make a pretty big delivery for this stage. It had extra tangos, a mango, and the wraith band on. Uh, and he was just able to walk in and take that away right in front might... of Mikke. Mikke has to be careful how he steps up with this point in Infernal Blade. He can die in Infernal Blade and a clap. As Milan, he's chasing out Insania. One more hit might be able to kill. Ooh. Nope. Radiant 15 HP. has been killed. Oh, Milan. He's still looking. <laughs> Insania. Yeah, he's going to be able to make it away. Mid, we see again. Tiger's looking for the big rotation this time as he dewarded the cliff. Morning, yeah. Stupendous. We'll be fine, though, as he does have that full bottle to heal himself up. And I'm seeing a Spectre not get pressured bottom. Tiger's looking to make some moves around mid, but this is always a concern. They haven't slowed down Skeeter at all. Spectre with free farm. A lot of aggressive wards we see placed out from Taiga. He's looking to get information inside the jungle because he knows Storm's gonna Storm's gonna hit these creeps soon. On top. But we see quick D wards. Stop. They're trying to make moves on 33, but it's a little too big for them to take down. Has a lot of one charges too. They're still trying to move in on him. And yeah, with the one popped, the quick will realize that this is not a kill they're gonna be able to get. And we see Tiger continue hanging around mid with this catapult wave pushing in, just forcing Borin here away from that mid tower. But lanes have after have lanes have kind of progressed now in these first six minutes. We see fairly even across the board, which you know as a storm and a spectre lineup. Yeah, I feel like you're always happy. Lanes going even, you're just you're in a great spot. Radiant structures are fortified. And even it, I mean, they're even a little bit ahead out of the lanes too, so. Radiance middle Very ideal eight. situation. It's definitely going to, to be pressure on Koifer to make some big moves early this game. He's, mm -hmm. he's going to have the boots out in a second with that urn. He can start trying to look to get a little involved in these side lanes. Uh, but as you say, they're, they're going to need to bring a lot down to that bottom lane already if they want to try and have a, a solid chance at killing off Skeeter. Yeah, he has much easier rotations to play around top, I feel. These two can set up for kills onto the Doom and the Rubik pretty easy. Killing the Spectre still is just... It's just too much of a task. Is it been? Uh, Barney is going to get a little active onto Quake, but... Of course, not enough damage right now for the Storm to, to really threaten the Invoker. In fact, Barney is taking quite a hit back. And Quake, as he holds his ground with the Cold Snap. Level 6 on for Skeeter, so Horn always at the ready. If they do find opportunities to fight on these other two lanes here, Mug Golems is still just holding that slight lead here. I feel like yeah, Insania just committed again with Swashbuckle. I Milan's mean, playing a little bit passive, I feel like. When Insania commits, I feel like a lot of these times he can just lift him and throw him on the Doom, and that's a kill. I think he's giving a little bit too much respect to this position 5 Pango. I've seen now like three times Insania putting himself in a jeopardizing position and doesn't get punished. Oh, yeah, quite for move up to the top there to, to see if he could get looking on anything, but Milan on the high ground gives them all the info that they need, and Quake was just going to have to head back towards mid. He's just not going to be able to catch anyone by surprise up top for now. He's going to try and make the play of go down bottom and helping box here. Skeeter, a little low on the HP, doesn't have any regen upon him. Oh, he might, might be able, be able to, to dive this. and burst him. 
Could be a really nice move here. Skeeter. He's got the dagger out. So he's speedy. So he can get connect. it. Another tornado EMP and remnant. Cold tap down as well. The damage is done. Nice. Smart moves from Quifer and, and in a way that, that would have caught them by surprise because as we saw showing himself top, coming in up to the stairs, they you know, just immediately with that TP down bottom, they weren't ready for that. Yeah, he gets himself his Zern charge now, so he can look to make some moves around the map a lot easier now. And warning here, he can re react with his TP to try to counter get, but it's always a little bit scary versus the speedy invoker. Koif is still hanging around bottom. There is a ward set up in the area, and they spotted that ward place too. But they're committing they just Fada. Get Fada. Yeah, Fada step up. forward to try and get some farm in this lane. Koif is still about. And Koif is going to be able to catch another. So some early players coming out from the invoker top lane. Boronia also starting to get active for Mug Golems. They dive in onto Insania underneath the tower. Of course, by this time, Mickey stepped away from the lane. He's hitting the jungle now. We're seeing sim very similar movements coming out from both teams. Mickey, he's going to be going for this greed. As we've seen, he's going to go for this Battle Fury this game. That could, that could be a little painful, I'll be totally honest. I feel like they might need him to go a little bit less greedy, but... We'll see. I, I feel like they can definitely take advantage of that on the side of Mud Golems, but at the same time, too, I'm looking at Liquid, and I feel like he actually has to just go for the Battle Fury. Otherwise, they just, they're just going to get outscaled way too hard this game. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how quickly he's able to get it online this game, and yeah. how much that, that sort of helps him stay ahead and alongside the, the three cores of Mud Golems that do all have some fantastic scaling and, and farming opportunities. As you can imagine, these, these three cores are... Not going to be too fussed, regardless of what state and stage the game gets to. No, that's why I'm feeling like it, it might be a bit of concern that he goes for the battle fear rather than going for your like your phase, your Yasha, your Basher, and just going for this battle kind of build. I feel like it could hurt them because they're playing now. I feel like they're playing into Mud Golem's hands a bit. The Mud Golems, they want this game to progress. They don't mind any of this type of passive play here. Yeah, this is going to be awesome. Quite have to be some huge moves from Liquid, but Quaifa is going to be spotted out here. They come in with the horn. They're going to jump in onto Insania, take him out. And now with Boronia closing the gap onto Quaifa. Quaifa will try and turn, but the range is there for Milan to come in with the telekinesis, take him out. They're headed over towards Tiger in the trees. They're going to be able to get the third here as Tiger's trying to run. Ooh. Oh, maybe he'll live it. Barney is low on the mana. The swash oh. actually off the mark. It doesn't matter, though. The range is there for Barney to come in with a final hit. Pick up a triple kill. I mean, that was a, a fantastic use there of the horn and, and the chase. As, as yeah. soon as they saw Quaifer, they made that move immediately. This is you know, one of the reasons why the slight concern for this Battle Fury. I feel like Mickey, he might have to get involved with this team. Like, even if he gets goes for Battle Fury, I think he actually, ha he actually might have to just start fighting with them. Because this does look like it's going to get really difficult for Liquid. Every time these ults are up, Mud Golems will have a very strong fight. And they saved Doom that last fight. I saw 33. Yeah. He, he almost instantly casted it. The Ghost Walk went off. He misses it. And then he raises his arms again. And they realize, wait, we don't need to use this. So now there's still this threat on the map of Doom if Liquid does look to make an aggressive play. And, and we saw there as well. Huge that Boronia gets all the, the last hits on those kills. This is his Orchid's just going to be so fast this game. Yeah. Bottom lane. Quaif has got the setup on a 33. They're in with the Rolling Thunder. 33 out of mana. Fada's trying to help him out, and he's able to do so. It's going to keep him safe for now. If the Rolling Thunder won't finish off the job, 33 is just able to walk away from the three of them, trying to make that move on him. Uh, and he's going to be fine. On the other side, though, Insania, he is not. Boronia catches him on the way out. And, and that's going to be the Orchid done. Yeah, it's a 12-minute Orchid on this storm. Uh, and you said earlier already, any time you sort of see a team getting this sort of power, you know, being the team that has a spec to this early on, you, you've got to feel a little concerned for the opponents. Yeah, and it's a very, like we said, it's a very volatile draft from Liquid. It's, it's very hard for them to actually play if they do start getting behind at any point, because, like, who's their front line? Who's going to act as his front line show? Because everyone who shows is going to get just orchided and picked off in the lane. It just, it's just, it just seems like it's going to be so easy for the Mud Golems to make that sort of play with, with just how fast this Orchid is on the Storm. It, it's, it's also a pretty free Storm game when you look at it. Sure, there's some disables he has to worry about, like the Aether Remnant and maybe like some Tornadoes and stuff like that. But if he's able to play around the initial setups, there's no actual just hard stun that they do have in their draft. It's, there's no like Sanking, Burrow Strike, no Lifts, nothing like that. Mm. Uh, and we've seen before, right, when, when you do go for, for the Invoker and you... You have this sort of play style that you want to get away with this, this earn into yours, making moves, making plays. If you do start to die, 
you know, you're going to fall behind so far that it, it's going to be one of those games where it's just all on the Trolls' shoulders. Yep. And, and if they don't find action liquid, their other two cores are going to slip back. Yeah, that's when we've seen, you know, Topson when he goes for this and he starts having some some tough ha tough stuff happen as the Invoker. He just builds Medallion, builds Glimmer, goes Solar, and you're just yeah. kind of this glorified support Invoker just buffing up a troll. Stupendous. Yeah, it definitely feels like it can get to that point pretty quickly in this game as Warning has always full mana, always looking for this threat. And there's not going to be the Yule setup either, right? We see Boxy. He's just rushing in Aghanims. That silence, it's going to be great onto the Storm if he's able to do so, but... He also can just die from an Orchid himself on that Void Spirit a lot of times, too, because he doesn't have that well. defensive. Fado was just able to get in. He gets the war coverage down, but it does get taken away. So not okay. quite the, the open setup for Boron to get in on that angle. Maybe seeing what else he can find. Scan hits, but there's a lot of Liquid here. So a little risky for Boron to come into it, at least until Liquid starts to separate. And Insania, he's, he's got to be careful about walking down onto the low ground and maybe even stand on this high ground. He might still be in, in a bit is of a him? spot of bother as they're trying to go. Baron here did actually, I believe, step in, uh, step in range of that outpost before he zipped, so they were aware of him. They have a sentry down, too. Yeah. They saw him for a second there. And still, there, this pressure is it's just space, right? Skeeter and space 33, they're just continuing to free farm. I mean, still, the troll, Mickey, he's, he's going to be on track for a good battle for you in time. In fact, does he, does he have it finished? Uh, he I does. Think he does, yeah. So the battle fury's done 15 minutes in, still very solid timing here from Mickey. Now, they've got some stacks prepared for him already. Oh, a nice stack. Oh, look at these. These are juicy. Typical nice. liquid fashion. A nice quad ancient and a quad hard camp right next to him with the Battle Fury. So, yeah, he's going to get pushed up almost to level 14 off of this. So he will be very farmed, but here comes the plays. Yeah. Showing on the lanes. It's becoming increasingly harder and harder for Liquid to do right now. Against the Orchid and the Haunt. There's so many ways of getting in on top of them, and, and 33 as well. BKB's nearly done. Face runs BKB in with the Doom ready to pop. 33, he's going to be able to find his target every single time. So already just having, I mean, you know, all three cores, they're, they're all able to just single out and focus whoever they want in these team fights. With the their set up. Fada's in position for a save, though. Yep, they're going to put the False Promise straight away. Make sure Barney is able to zip out to the side. And that will keep him more than fine. Liquid aren't going to look to chase this. Uh-oh. This is a five position Pango. Therefore, he does not have a point in his W. Therefore, it's a free steal for Milan. This is like one of the best spells in the game that you can get on Rubik. No cast animation, rolling thunder to set up in these fights. Oh? Or in here. Actually, not getting caught there by Insane. He didn't quite land the angle with the, the swashbuckle. Yeah, it's, 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 uh, I feel like we're sort of going to see a similar game as we were actually saw from, uh, from that last game in the previous series. You know, for. For Liquid, it's all about their carry. Mickey, he's got to carry this hard. Yeah, it's it's going to be a very heavy farm game. It does feel like, but I, that just I feel like it just favors Mud Golems. They have so many different forms of scaling. Rubik has a lot of different good spells to seal for Milan, and yeah, he has the best one right now. So in this downtime where there's no haunt, they still can't look to take advantage of it on Liquid. Now there's that stolen rolling thunder. Maybe they can kill Fada bottom. Yeah, they shouldn't have any problems here. Taking him out. Milan's going to come uh -oh. in though, and there's the steal. Over with the Rolling Thunder. Turn over towards Insania. 33 charging him, but Insania is able oh. to roll out himself. He'll get away. Not enough control there from Milan to, to buy time for 33 to close in. Over towards mid. They're trying to chase for Boronir here. Boronir, he's. Wait, he, he zipped he back in. off. Oh, no, what? I only can imagine that he clicked on his mini map, but he was in the river. He literally just zipped straight back into them. I That must have been a misclick. That's the second time I think we've seen that this tournament. We've seen some storms getting a little too close yeah. to their mini maps. Yeah. I mean, that, that's and the only explanation for that one. There is no other reason to make that move as no. he just turns straight back into them. Look at this. They get the lift. 33's running in. He gets the Doom. Oh, Tiger tried to troll. save him with the destruction, but the Doom was already down. Mickey, he's going to try and run from this. Fado, has he got enough damage to push Mickey over the edge? They do. Daggers out. Mickey is taken down. And just the moment that Liquid, they finally are getting some something rolling for them, something good, beating on towers, they lose the hero. That's everything for them. And it's right around, I guess, Orochi. Oh, looks they're like they're going to try for I mean, go for. Not necessarily the sort of the, the optimal oh. Roche-taking lineup, but I guess with Still the Blade Mail, tankiness, the Spectre, they can do this. 
and Stolen Disruption. They've got the double Ooh. illusion specters for the Desolate. This actually makes it that much more possible. Oh, it really does. I mean, Liquid know it's up. They're going to try and roll in Insania. He's got the Rolling Thunder coming through as 33 is low. Insania not going to be able to find the bounce. They'll wait outside of the pit for now. Jump forward from Boxy. He's in onto Fada. Fada's going to get burst down, but Porony is looking for the back line. Straight away over to Koifer. Koifer able to protect himself with the self jewels. 33 slams down the stun. Silence is there onto Porony, but it's not going to stop him taking down Koifer. Boxy jumps over to the side with the Astral Step. Vicky's back. Porony up. Off the side. 33 is taken out. And Liquid, they've found two. It's Roche as well. And Mick is here. He should be able to finish this off unless Barney is able to get a good zip off. He popped the battle trance. Actually, straight away for, for that extra sort of chance to take it down at a bit of a quicker speed. But that means he's not going to have it to save himself. What's up? Jump forward on the side. Skeeter's in, but the it. Roche is taken. Mickey's able to get the kill and the Aegis. He grabs both. Over to the side, Barnier trying to burst down Insania, but the Glimmer Cape saves there. Insania's going to be able to get away, and now with the Remnant Torn onto Skeeter. Skeeter's in trouble. He's falling low, plus the one charge. Will manage to maneuver himself up to the high ground with the dagger. He's out of there, but Liquid, they get the Roche and they get that Aegis for Mikke. Able to respawn in a, I mean, perfect timing. It really did feel like it. A Mud Golems, that looks very close for them to be able to get it with those illusions, but ends up giving it up to Liquid. We still see Koikva though, he is, he is the one who's really suffering. He bought back in that last fight to make sure that they can ensure that Roche. And just look at his net worth, how much it's suffering. So it's still going to be a really tough task for Mikke, even though he has this Aegis. It might not feel like the strongest Aegis, it's just going to be an Aegis to farm. As Mudgolems, I feel like they can still fight, even into this, because it's, it's on the troll who's... Sure, he's got the SNY and the Battle Fury now to fight, but the rest of the four heroes are still pretty fragile. And they do have Haunt as well as full mana on Storm and Doom. So I think Skeeter, go back to base refresh. They might be able to look and set up for a smoke gank here. And so, sort of looking at the heroes that Mug Golems have, you know, just despite the fact that Mickey is as farmed as he is, would you would you say that Mug Golems have the, the tools to deal with a very farm troll this game? Yeah, they have the Doom. However, I think there's always the one X factor when I see uh, Shadow Demon versus Spectre is if Taiga is able to get Ags. It's like this this type of swap of these carry matchups because Dispersion's just gone the whole game. So we're going to get with the smoke. Mickey, showing in the lane. They want to try and get the... There is behind him, but there's a lot of them. Liquid coming down in full force to this bottom lane. The Mugglons try want to try and make a jump. Barney is looking for an opportunity. And that's the vision we'll favoring them. They've got the lift up. They'll jump in Sania first, but the disruption comes out from Tiger. Tiger buys a bit of safety for him. Barney turns his attention over towards Tiger. And Sania not able to get the Rolling Thunder off in time. As there's three down, now they'll turn over towards Mikke. Mikke's trying to run, but the 33 are hot on his chase. Takes him out the ones. Now A just taken out. Boxy is trying to create some sort of a distraction, allow space for Mikkei to live, and it will work. Mikkei's going to be able to escape, but it's at the cost of every other member of Liquid. And I feel like that, that could start to, to be the, the story we're going to see here. Everybody but Mikkei dying as everyone else is just feeling so weak. We saw in that fight, as soon as the horn came out, both supports and quite for they fell over immediately. Yeah, they just get, they're, they're able to pick and choose and get the perfect initiation every single time with this draft. That's why we're seeing it picked so often, right? This Storm Inspector combo. You always can just break the initiations. 33 just gets the Doom on whatever target he wants. And then, yeah, they just they steamroll over the fight with ease. So that's really going to be the name of this game here. Has this Orchid to this limited ways to be able to purge it off. Like Boxy, not having not having a Yule Scepter, just having this Ags Rush. He just gets Orchid in the fight too, and he does come in to try to help. And yeah, Spectre, Skeeter hitting very good timings. Manta on his way toward the defusal. And it's just, it's feeling like it, that it's all going to be enough. It's really just Mickey. They have to, it's all the weight on his shoulders. You just have every buff for him. They're going to try for the smoke liquid. See what they can find around mid lane. Mickey leading the way. Barney steps up with the invis. Boxy's trying to jump with the back lines to look to burst. Fada, is he able to do so? Fada still alive for now. He's been tornadoed up on the side. 33 jumps yep. up with the Hustop. He's able to catch up both Koifa and Tiger. Tiger coming out with the self-disruption, keeping himself safe. Mickey moving in onto 33, but they've lost Tiger. Rolling Thunder through him insane. It doesn't really connect onto Skeeter. anyone at all. They're able to pull back Skeeter. Battle Trance comes out. Skeeter getting low, but he pops the Manta. He's out to the side. 33 tries to jump in to save him, but Skeeter goes down. Liquid get the big kill. They get the Spectre. Radiant structures are fortified. Still seeing how much damage they can do, especially with all these ults being down. About 20 seconds though till Doom is back up. See Mudgolem still lingering in the area looking for a jump, but 
Damage is done. A great move from Liquid, punishing those cooldowns and getting the big kill, getting that Spectre. And I think that Mickey got the last hit as well, too. So, nice little jump of gold for him there. Keeping him solidly, solidly at the top of the game. Uh, that BKB money, it's, it's going to be done. Mm -hmm. So between the BKB and the battle chance, Mickey has now become a, a very hard hero to take out. I mean, as we've seen, Mug Golems, they can pretty much deal with the rest of Liquid, but Mickey is certainly going to be quite the ordeal to take down. Unless they just do him, which could definitely still happen, especially now that everything is up. So it's, Liquid still has to play really well around these cooldown timings, but they do have some nice driving forces. Insania also does have a Blink Dagger, so he can look to actually get some good initiations himself if he doesn't just die immediately to the haunt. Still feeling that pressure. Every time these ults are up, just Liquid has to somehow hope and just try to lose the least amount of heroes as possible, it feels, when they do just pop everything. As we are seeing Koikva, he's just going for... I mean, he's got Boots of Travel queued up. I guess he just wants any ways to build to disengage and reset if he does get doomed and run from the haunt. I would like to see him build some type of buffing item for Mika, though. I, I do want to see him go for Solar Crest. There we go. Move from Mug Golems. As you say, the real challenge and task is just taking out the troll. And that zoom in on him. I'll find Insania. They'll go for an easy kill. Insania presents himself. Barani is still with mana to play with. Boxy did oh, jump Boxy. in on this. He's used both of his steps, but Baron here, does he want to chase this up to the high ground? He does. It's onto Boxy. Glimmer Cape save will be there, but they've got the counter. Dust is out. And Tornado coming into play as well as the disruption to try and keep him safe. Baron here able to zip to dodge the MP, but he zipped he straight into the again. hands, but the false promise save is there. Horn comes out. Skeeter jumps in over towards Boxy. Mickey, he did not use either the battle chance to BKB. He's still got both. So, it looked like uh, it for a second. It looked weird because he had the alacrity buff. Yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, he keeps sort of changing his form and it looks like yeah. he's popping the chance, but you're right. He's, he saved both of them, so still good to fight on the troll. And not too bad. That was the haunt used and they did lose... You know, they lost something, but not nothing too massive. They didn't lose any of their... They didn't lose the troll in particular, so... Still have to watch out as Doom is still available. And Borninga, he has full mana with these 16 Bloodstone charges. All of Liquid still playing, hugging each other. So Skeeter knows he can just get all this farm down bottom now. As, yeah, Liquid, they really have to just play sitting behind each other. So I feel like this is just going to allow Skeeter to always get so much farm on the map during this downtime, too. The threat of the storm is always there. A 5k lead for Mug Golems and... You know, as big as Mickey's troll is, it, it definitely does feel that Liquid are, are playing the riskier game right now. But when you do have this this, this strap Ooh. where it's all in on your carry, or Boxy. See Boxy, been caught in the river. As Boxy gets burst out, Tiger and Quite for they're trying to step forward. Slow down 33 with a tornado, uh, with a man down. Liquid, they'll disengage, get themselves out of it. Uh, but but yeah, you know, Liquid playing this you know single core lineup where you, you are, you're against the Doom. And, mm -hmm. and this hero, he's kind of the, the counter to that sort of star, right? Yep. And I mean, having your, you know, they have great scaling heroes too, great ways to catch the back line. It feels like the game just gets harder and harder for Liquid as it does go on. But how do they break it? They have to pretty much just play perfect around these haunt cooldowns. And right now, it is down, but they still they keep losing a hero. That was their big move. They did that big smoke to try to catch people while haunt was down. And Boxy ran through the river and kind of gave it away there as they were set up on the high ground. They have to be a lot more careful. They can't... I feel like if they make like one or two more of these type of mistakes, the game is just going to be at a point where they just can't fix it. They, it really feels like they have to play perfect on the side of Liquid. Radiant are scanning. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. And you can sort of see it from Mug Golems as well. They, they don't really feel under too much pressure at all right now. And they know that the troll's going to to get infinitely more farmed. They always do oh. have that solution with the Doom. Oh, I didn't actually see this too. Milan has Shadow Purge. He has the Demonic Purge stolen too. So, Ooh. I mean, versus Mickey, if there's a fight that kicks off, he just purges the troll and it's it's disastrous. So if a fight does kick off pretty soon, which I feel like Mudgolems is going to force a fight any moment now as a DD spawns top and they have everything available. Roche also back to life. This could be that big timing. A Basher finished up for Mika, so he's hitting a big, a pretty big peak timing as well too, but we're really seeing 
how tough of a hill it is for him to climb as he's all alone. Koifa has half the net worth of all the other cores in the game on the side of Mud Golems. Step in, but there's the job. 33 is in. Is in straight away. Mickey's able to put the BKB though. Turns over towards 33. Balatrance comes out. 33 trying to get the doom off. Can he do so? He can't. Bash 33 take is he's lost his life. Mickey's taking him down over to the side. And Senior trying to look towards the storm and the spectre. They've lost two on Liquid. They're now going to try and get Mickey out of there. No BKB and no battle chance. Boronir trying to chase, but doesn't really have the mana to continue to do so. So Mud Golems, they come out with those two buybacks. That they are going to maybe see if they can secure the Roche. Uh, but Liquid probably still able to try and give up some sort of fight around here. It's very scary for Mickey Quite to fun. get involved in the fight, though. Quite they can take oh and the Invoker, God, they dead. can. That's one. Yeah, I think I think Mud Golems knows that Mickey Mickey can't turn up to the fight. No battle trance, no BKB. He can just get killed in a single disable. There's a Doom available, so this should be this should be a free roast for them to set up for. Right, we've got some fantastic Aegis and cheese carriers here. The best. And we're up to 20 Bloodstone stacks for Borani here, and Skeeter he hits level 21 in that last fight too. So some HP talent and almost a finish Scotty on top too. And yeah, the, it, it, the story continues. It's just Mickey versus the world as, you know, we, like you said, this game does, feel, game does feel like the last game that we just casted where it looks like four heroes are going to take over the top five net, port, net worth. And it's it's, it goals. is getting there. I mean, and that, really that doesn't happen there. every day. I mean, to see it sort of two games in a row is quite something. Yeah. Only Fada being left behind is Boxy. He showed himself mid again. And still at this point, just no items to, to really save himself. But Tiger... Maybe that'll do it. Comes in with a disruption. Boxy is taking heavy damage here, trying to juke away, but the burst is there from Fada. Finishes him off with the purifying flames. Boroni up. Let me see if he can hunt down Tiger. Tiger's trying for the TP out, but 33's found him in the trees. And so with a hoof stomp, puts a stop to that. More bloodstone charges for Boroni now. 11, 1, and 9. I do feel like, uh, again, sort of before this tournament, really, we were in an age where Storm really struggled. I'm not quite sure about his exact win rate, but uh, definitely when Boronir's had his hands on him, uh, we, we've seen some great games from uh, from Boronir yeah. Storm this tournament. He's been dominating, really. Yeah. And it's, it's always like they, they get this last pick where he sees a game where there's some limited disables and he just takes advantage of it. I mean, 11, 1, and 9. He's 20 <laughs> of the 23 kills for his team. He's having a pretty amazing performance with that 12-minute Orca timing. And Boxy, like, I'm going to comment about this one, too, because he went for this full aggressive build with the Aghanims, but not having this Yules or Dispel is... It's just destroying it's gotten him. killed so many times. And they don't have yeah. setup either because of it. Like, if they had a Yules, maybe they can set up a little easier on Boron Ninkhead, but without it, it's just... It's too hard. Boron he's going to try and have a bit of poke at Mickey. Hey, it's literally just a poke. Just a poke. Nothing more. Maybe seeing if he could spook him, get some BKB charges out. He has so much mana to work with, with these oh. Bloodstone stacks he can play... Very aggressively here, too, with this Aegis. The scan is out. It catches him, but yeah, you can see the pressure that Liquid's getting just from a Storm being there. Yeah. Now Haunt is available, so there's always that threat of the outnumbering. I mean, and the thing is, as well, you've got to remember, the only time he actually died was when, uh, as we imagined, the blunder did happen where he clicked the minimap. The, the only yeah. time he died was when he messed up, like, uh, made a genuine mistake. It, other than that, Liquid haven't been able to do anything about him. They need him to make those mistakes as it seems to actually have a chance of killing him. Yeah, he's really been on fire with his targeting in fights too. Finds himself a nice DD bottom and always carrying dusts. You know, these Storm Spirits, they understand. Especially him, he's always been the one who carries them. To be able to find these targets in the back. See Skeeter, he's pushing out top. Koikva, he's been kind of trying like rat mode here to deal with these creep waves. Oh, Milan's hunting! Oh, he's into the trees, Mickey? he's found Mickey! He's doomed. He's gone. He's not got buyback either. Dead for 85. That was a huge catch there. I mean, I'm not quite sure what gave them the info to know that he was in the trees, but Milan hunted him down. I mean, what, what, would you imagine they would have... What did they see that gave them that... I guess they had the wards around here. Did he come through the triangle and they knew he was still hanging around? But yeah, Milan just straight in. He knew he was hiding. Uh, he just knew. I glanced off yeah. to see where Skeeter was because Skeeter was pushing out the wave. I mean, that's a huge catch to find there. I mean... Uh, this whole game, it, it is Mickey versus Mud Golems, and Mickey's dead for a minute. Boroni is in. I mean, there's no Mickey. It's time for them to start having some fun, Mud Golems. They don't care about any of the other members of Liquid. They can just go in, dive the base, dive tier fours. They don't care. Liquid's got nothing against the rest of them. As Boxy, he's down. They lose Mickey. They lose everything. They have nothing against the rest of Mud Golems. As Mud Golems take the tier three, they're going to take the racks here as well.
Maybe and even this two is, sets. you know, this this is it, this is the weakness when you have these sort of drafts that end up in a four protect one. You lose that one, and you really do lose everything. Yeah, four protect one into a doom as well, and just. It looks like Liquid, they were trying something out this game, right, with this five Pangolier. Mud Golems just did a very cookie-cutter strategy, yep. laid it to perfection, and yeah, it felt like Liquid's... The, the hope disappeared pretty early on in this game, probably around, like, the 25-minute mark. Started to really take a turn for the worst, and at this point, yeah, it's it's just impossible for Mickey. Look at this. Just look at the net worth. Yeah, they have four of the top five. <laughs> That's insane. Oh. oh, no, Liquid having a rough one here. But as you, as you say, maybe a bit of experimenting. I mean, this experiment, you know, it's not over yet. But uh, so far, it doesn't look like the results are going to be uh, too great for Liquid. No. And they're not even able to get something I was hopeful for for them. This game is that Aghanim's on the Shadow Demon to actually give Mickey a fighting hope versus that Spectre. They're going to go for a smoke here. Let's see if they can catch off guard as Haunt is still cool down 15 seconds. Let's see what they can get with Mickey. Leading the way. Spectre's they see the big the Spectre one. Too. He's got a cheese, though. He's pretty buff. And Tornado is off the mark. Might not matter. They have the silence after the man, so they're in onto him. Is he get the blame mail off? He's able to pop oh the cheese. God. Mickey, he's doing so much damage to himself. He's got to be careful. 33 is going to jump in for the Rolling Thunder. Is there? And they will be able to finish him off. Mickey's low, though. He's been held to the side. Post the BKB. Skeeter coming back in with the buyback horn as they're just cleaning up once more. Mickey's BKB is about to come to an end. There's four dead on Liquid. And that, that's the problem when you're playing against the Spectre at this stage. Buyback Haunt, it's always going to be there. You blow everything trying to kill him. And, and Skeeter's always just going to be able to press buyback, press R, turn back up, turn the fight around. And, and this one, it, it's looking pretty overfogged. Yeah, and even even before he pops the hunt, he almost killed everybody just with Dispersion and Blade. <laughs> they were all at like 20% to 40% HP. It was an easy cleanup for all of Mud Golems, even if Skeeter doesn't buy back. As yeah, this looks like it's... Clear and cut for them to end. Mud Golems just continuing to impress and just continuing to look real good in this tournament here. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, the, the, if you've not been catching some of the performances from Mud Golems, then yeah, you've missed out on some very, very impressive showings. And as we said, some of them built around heroes such as the Boronir Storm. Long jump. Insania, he finds him, flips him with the damage, and I mean, it's godlike to boot. It's just insane that we're we're seeing such a storm performance come out consistently from Boronir. You know, yep. the, the other people have tried to play the storm. It's not working. Boronir, it really does feel like every game he is just he's just crushing. He is just crushing to the point where I don't think you can go into a draft against this team and allow the chance for for that storm to come in as the last pick unless you're really confident that your lineup's got some solid storm answers. I definitely agree. It just he puts on way too much pressure on the map. Yeah. It's 12 minute Orchid just from his like rotation top getting triple kill and just it's been a constant threat the whole game for Liquid that they've been they've been hand holding because they can't show in lanes and bottom. bottom. Look at the dude! I mean he's dead, Mickey just gets caught outside him and it's, it's over. It's he's G dead for two minutes, there's no buyback. <laughs> this is the cleanup here from Mug Golems. And yeah, def definite back to the drawing board for Liquid. The strap, the draft they tried this game. Just it, it just wasn't doing anything. Mickey got farm. That was about it, really. Nothing else really happened for Liquid. As we're seeing here, one final cleanup from Mug Golems. Foxy's going down. Actually able to jump out to the side. False Promise keeps 33 alive. Trying their best to fight, but there's no Boxy. There's no Mickey for over a minute. As there we have it. GG is called. And uh, yeah, just, just a weird strat, weird approach from Liquid. And uh, I mean, we said it's not Mud Column. There's nothing really too surprising about their lineup. It